This is JD with Digital Movie Boards. Today we're going to do a tutorial on our Movie Poster App Pro version. We're going to do a walkthrough and explain some of its features and how to use the app. So when you receive your DMP02 kit or one of our pre-built Digital Movie Boards, the Pro app is going to be installed. And when you plug it in for the first time, you're going to have to do a few steps to get it connected to your network. And once it's connected to your network, we can open up the web app and start to control it. And so we're going to start with that process. So we're going to assume that you've already received your digital movie board or your DMP02 kit. You've got it connected properly. If not, you can view one of our other tutorials on how to make those connections. So let's boot up the movie board first. At first, you get a QR code with an IP address. The IP address is the first thing that you want to record. You'll notice in the background that movie posters are playing, but you can't control it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that IP address, we're going to open up our browser on our desktop, and in the address bar, we are going to type in that IP address. Now be aware that the IP address shown on the movie board will only last for one rotation of a movie poster, and then it will disappear. By default, that is about 15 seconds, so please make a note of that. If you happen to miss it, just unplug the power from the media player, plug it back in, wait for it to boot up, and then when it does, write down the IP address. All right, so let's type in the IP address in our address bar at the top. 192.168.1.244 is the IP address of my particular uh, movie poster app here. Your IP address will vary. Now you'll notice that the app came up when you added the, um, the IP address at the top. So this is the home page. And in the home page, you'll notice that there are several tabs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're going to go through these tabs one by one because this is how you control the settings on your movie poster app. You also have a header here telling you which version of the app that you're looking at. In this case, we are at the Pro version. And we actually have a version number of the software itself down here at the bottom. And in this case, as of December 16th, 2023, this is the current version, 1.0.5. Now, your version may vary depending on when you are watching this video because we do update this app. And we will start off at the playback settings. So let's open up the playback settings tab. And you'll notice that in the playback settings tab, we've got two sections. We've got a poster section and a banner section. So we'll start at the poster settings up here. The duration feature here lets us choose the duration of the movie poster to stay on the screen. By default, it's 15 seconds, but you can set it anywhere from 5 seconds to infinity. We also have a fade time, which is how long it takes to fade from one poster to the other. 3 seconds is what we recommend. The movie folder uh, playback is basically just that. Here you choose which folder of content you want to play back on the screen. By default, you have a movie posters folder and three custom folders. For the, for the moment, we're going to just ignore the lost and found folder because we can delete that later. So you have 600 movie posters already preloaded into your movie poster app. And this is the default folder that it starts up. And that's why you can see the movie posters playing. But as you add content, you will change the name of these folders to movie trailers, or music videos, or whatever other content that you will be loading, you will rename these folders to match accordingly. And you will choose that folder for playback here. The playback mode will allow you to choose either random playback or by file name. And then the automatic now playing from plugin, which is by default off, is used for the Kaleidoscape plugin. And what this does is it will automatically switch views from the current movie poster view to the Kaleidoscape view when you're using a Kaleidoscape movie player to playback movies. And then when you stop 
watching a movie through your Kaleidoscape, it will automatically switch back to the display view. And we're going to go over the display view shortly. By default, this is off. If you have a Kaleidoscape player, you might want to turn this feature on. Same goes for Plex. And you choose which player, you're, which plugin you're going to be using right here. Now the movie poster controls, this is basically a way for you to quickly pause the posters or the videos, go to the next one, or go to the previous one. Now when you make these changes, you want to hit update settings. And that will make the changes go into effect. The display views here are going to play a big role as we move forward. Uh, the display views will show what you want to be displayed on your screen or how you want it to be displayed on your screen. By default, you mo most people will be using the movie poster view. And the movie poster view will just play movie posters, movie trailers, your regular content. If you are using Plex or Kaleidoscape or any future plugins that require a display view, you can choose which view to, that you want the movie poster board to look like by, check, by checking them off here. So for instance, the weather view. If we select weather, you'll notice on the movie board that the weather, that the poster board has changed to show your current weather. And you'll notice here on the app that the display view is now showing current under the movie poster or from the movie poster to the weather view. So this tells you what view you're are in. We're going to go back to movie poster. We just select movie poster and you'll notice that the movie posters have started up again. Now let's go to the banner settings. This is where we can adjust what we want to display for the upper and the lower banners. And the cool thing about the movie poster app is that upper banners and lower banners are independent and dynamic. And what I mean by that is that you can choose to have the, just the top banner on, just the bottom banner on, both upper and lower banners on, or both upper and lower banners off. You can also choose a banner depending on what view you are looking at. So if you are in Plex view, the banners you choose for Plex will be independent from the banners in the movie poster view. Same thing with Plec, with, with Kaleidoscape. So for instance, if you have movie poster view and you have a banner that says coming soon, but you go to Plex or to Kaleidoscape and you press play, the banner will change to show now playing because obviously that would be the poster of the movie that you are now playing. And those three views, Movie Poster, Plex, and Kaleidoscape, will have independent memories for each of those banners. Now to change the banners, we can click on the Advanced Banner Settings. And this is where we turn the banners on and off, upper and lower, for both images or videos. By default, both banners are on for images. Both banners are off for videos. Now, as far as our content that you download from the store goes, all the videos will play in full screen 16 by 9, which do not require you to turn the banners on. If you do turn the banners on while watching one of our videos, the video itself may shrink a little bit to allow for the space that the banners are going to take up. Now, if you create your own videos and upload them, you can create those videos so that they do not stretch as long as they have these dimensions for the banners. So by default, video banners are off, image banners are on. And you change those here. Now, this magenta section here and this magenta section here is what you choose as far as which banner to display. So when you select the top banner, we get a drop-down list that is active. In other words, you can see which banners are animated and which ones are static. And then you can choose to play these back. Same goes for the bottom. You can choose and see which banners you have, which are static and which are animated. And just by clicking on this, the 
the banner will change. You can also upload your own banners as long as they meet these resolutions, 1080 by 136 for the top banner, 1080 by 100 pixels for the bottom banner. So let's change a banner. You notice that the banner playing right now on the movie board is a static coming soon banner. We can open up our banner box and select now showing and you'll notice that immediately the upper banner changed and it is a twinkly lights and it is animated and we can do the same thing for the bottom banner we can select this home cinema one and it will also change automatically and it changes pretty fast so this is how we change the banners we can choose another banner we wanted to like this neon light coming soon and again you notice that it's changed so it's a very quick changeover. The next button, or the last button, is called the Refresh Display. And this basically just refreshes the display in case there are any anomalies. All right, let's come back up here to the Home key. Here we are on the Home page. The Media Preview was a section that was added because a customer suggested it, that it might be helpful. If we open up the Media Preview, we get a preview of your poster. Now you notice that this is the same banner, upper and lower, that you have currently on your poster. Now where this comes in, comes in helpful is if your office where you have your PC is in one end of the house, but your theater where you have the movie board is in the opposite end of the house, and you change banners here in the playback settings, you change banners, well typically you would have to get up from your office Go across the house to where your movie board is, see your movie board to see if you like that particular banner, then come back to your office and then make any additional changes. But this media preview makes that really quick because you can instantly see the banner that you changed, both upper and let's do lower. Come down here and we'll change the lower banner to that one. We'll come back up here. We'll go to the media preview and you'll see it's changed. So this is a very quick way for you to see what, how your movie board looks with the banners that you are uploading, whether you like them or not, and make the changes without you having to leave your desktop. It's a little time saver. All right, let's go back to the home page. Media Gallery. Media Gallery is also a suggestion given to us by a customer that wanted to know how he can see all of the posters that he has in his app because if he wants to purchase additional posters, he wants to make sure he doesn't double them up. So we added a media preview gallery of all of your posters, and they show up at 50 at a time. And from your phone, iPad, or desktop, you can quickly come through here and see which posters you have. If you don't have the poster you're looking for, you can purchase it and add it. If the poster is already in here, you don't have to spend money to make that purchase to add it. So it's a quick way to see what you have. All right, let's go back to the home page. Plugins. Plugins is where we choose to play back content through Plex players or through Kaleidoscape players. So if you are a Plex user, open up your Plex tab. And in the Plex settings up here, you're going to input just two settings, the IP address of your Plex server and your Plex token. Now your Plex token is something that you have to get from your Plex player. So you'll have to figure out using Google how to find your Plex token. When you do, you add it here and you save the settings. That will make the connection between our poster app and your Plex server so that whenever you are watching a movie through Plex, the correct movie poster is displayed. And you also have upper and lower banners, as well as the actual now showing banner, all right here for you to choose. The nice thing about it is, since Plex is a yellow icon, and that is their primary color, we've made all of these colors to match Plex, which is a nice little touch, I think. All right, let's go back into the Kaleidoscape. Kaleidoscape, you'll notice that we kept the same color scheme, which is Kaleidoscape Blue. Okay. 
Now the Kaleidoscape player is a little bit more involved due to the hardware, but uh, it's still pretty easy. So what you need is you need the IP address of your Kaleidoscape player. You need the password if you have one. And you need the device ID, which is required. And it has to be two digits. So for instance, if your device ID is one, you would enter zero one. These little balloons here will give you some, some help in how to make those selections. Okay. So once you enter the information, you're going to save the credentials. If your credentials are correct, you will get a confirmation saying that they are correct. Step number two would be to get actual content from the Kaleidoscape. Now, unfortunately, Kaleidoscape's movie posters are pretty low resolution. So we recommend that you choose get HD posters from the movie database. If you select this, you're going to need to enter your code, which is given to you when you create an account at the movie poster database. So uh, you would go to the TMDB, create an account, find your API key, copy it, paste it here, and then every poster will automatically be downloaded for each movie that you have in your library, and they will be higher resolution. The Get Trailers does something similar. It will go out and fetch the uh, URLs for the movies, trailers, for the posters that you, or for the movies that you have in your Kaleidoscape. So if you have uh, 400 movies, Get Trailers will go out, get the URLs for those 400 movies, and you can play them back in a separate view, which we'll get to in a second. When you get content, what's going to happen is that in this space here, you're going to start to see all of the content that you are pulling in, all the posters and all of the trailers that will match the movies that you have in your Kaleidoscape. This can take a while depending on how many movies you have. Step three would be to choose which view you want your board to look for. So remember, if we go back to our home page and then into the playback settings, we have these display views, and I said these would be very important. Well, they are. So just like Plex would change the, uh, the, the view over to a Plex view if you're using Plex, movie poster views are for just regular everyday use of playing back just regular content, we also have the Kaleidoscape view. And the Kaleidoscape view is three different, three different views. Now we chose to keep them here in the app just because it's easier. So display view one is called the banner view, which is basically an entire movie poster with the banners, how most people would probably choose it. But we also have a detailed view, which will display the movie poster and then the de details for the movie on the top. And then we have a trailer view, which will put the movie poster on the top and it'll play the trailer right below it. You can choose any of these views uh, and then you would move on to step number four. Step number four, the final step, is just choosing your banners. And again, select the banner that you want to be displayed and the banner that you want for your now showing. And that will automatically display every time that you press play on your Kaleidoscape player. Very easy. All right, let's go back to the home key. Now, the DMB TV. This is a feature that's going to be used quite a bit in the future. But basically, it's broken into two sections. DMB TV and YouTube. So DMB TV is basically going to be information, videos, uh, instruction manuals, news, um, all kinds of content delivered straight to the movie board. Uh, in this case, we have a Thanksgiving uh, fireplace video going on here under the seasonal tab. And if we press stream now, you'll notice that on the movie board, it will start to stream that video In full screen and so it's a nice way to have a little bit of ambience going on when you're not actually using your movie board to, to show movie posters and this will change depending on the seasons or anything else that we want to display so Christmas time will have a Christmas theme that Halloween will have a Halloween theme and they will play them you'll be able to play them back full screen now, it's broken up into two sections here on the app. On the left, on the right here, you can, independently from what's displaying on the board, you can play back the video to see if it's 
what you want. And if it is, then you can hit stream now and it will send it over to the board. Right below it is our DMB TV. This is where we're going to have news broadcasts sent out automatically uh, that pertains to movie boards or the home theater industry. Uh, when we go to consumer electronics shows, we will be broadcasting those too. And you'll be able to see right on your board uh, all of that content. So we can hit stream now and you'll notice that our spokesperson will be playing. And so this is pretty neat because we are, are going to be doing away with paper instruction manuals or we're having to tie you uh, onto a computer to do a bunch of searching all over the internet. We're going to actually just broadcast all of this information directly to your movie board. And that includes promotions. That includes tips and tricks on how to do certain things with our movie poster app. You can, you can watch all of those right here without having to go to the internet and scour the internet uh, and ask questions on the internet. Chances are it will be right here. And if it's not, you can always email us and we will make a video and we will put it up there. Now, when you finish watching your views, let's come back up here and we would just hit movie poster view and that would get us right back to uh, the movie posters. Right, it pops us out of the DMB TV video streaming view and back to the movie posters. Now, let's go to the other view, the, U the uh, YouTube view. This one is super cool. So for instance, if you go over to YouTube, you can now stream any YouTube video right to your board. That includes movie trailers, uh, music videos, any kind of content. Now, when you go to YouTube, you can find content that is both portrait, vertical, or landscape. Keep in mind that if you play back a video that is in landscape, it's going to play back in landscape. If you play back a video that is in portrait, it will play back full screen. And I'll show you. So we're going to open up a tab and we're going to go to YouTube. We are going to type in, uh, we're going to say uh, Lainey Gardner. Lainey Gardner is uh, just this uh, artist who sings a Fleetwood Mac song, but her particular video is in portrait. And this is her right here, Lainey Gardner. So we're going to select the video for playback. And you would do this for Show every Show your daughter how much you love her with this beautiful gift. You want to play back. It says, the down there. to my right. daughter. So what you want to do Never forget is you that want I to love you forever. get the video going. And then let's go ahead and pause the video. Okay. Now you notice up here on the URL, every YouTube video has a certain set of characters after the equal sign at the end. So that is what you want to highlight. The last set of characters after the equal sign as you're playing the video. Select, copy them. We can now just close off our YouTube tab. And back here in the YouTube sections where it says quick stream, quick stream is the fast way to play back a video. After the embed forward slash, you want to place, paste that particular set of characters that you copied, hit set, and you'll notice that on the movie board, you are now playing that video in full screen. Right? Now, that's the quick stream, quick way to play back a video. But let's just say you, over time, end up liking 10 different videos. Well, we can bookmark those videos here. And you can bookmark as many as you want. So for instance, we would give a name to this one, which in this case is Lady Gardner, right? We will add that URL that we just uh, copied and paste it up here. We will add it here and we will create the bookmark. And so what happens is that now we have a bookmark here created for that video. And so we can do this as many times as we want and we will just have more and more and more bookmarks here. And so we can easily come back here with that to your app without having to go to YouTube and just start playing back those videos. Very sweet. You can also delete them if you want to, if you get tired of them or you don't want them anymore, just delete them. But any video, you can bookmark it as many as you want and immediately go back to those videos just by pressing the Stream Now button. And it works pretty sweet. Very, very nice. All right, let's go back home. We're going to go back to the playback settings. And again, we're going to 
choose poster view, which is where we want to be. And notice that video stopped playing. And we are now back to movie posters. Now let's go to the media upload tab. This is a tab where you will be uploading content. So by default, you have a movie posters folder, four custom folders, which are empty, and then a lost plus found folder. You can delete this one. This one's not needed. To delete it, you just select that, hit delete, and verify, and you're done. Now, if we wanted to play back movie posters like we are, we would select it over here in the playback settings, right? Media folder for playback, we select it, we got our four customs. You'll notice how the lost and found disappeared because we deleted it. So this is very dynamic and instantaneous. So we have movie posters selected. But let's upload uh, some content, right? So we're going to upload um, a movie trailer. So first of all, we're going to rename this. Let's rename it movie trailers. All right, so there it is, movie trailers. Let's select it and go into that folder. Uh, I'm going to delete this poster that I've got in there. So you notice that in the folder that we created movie trailers, there is nothing. So we are going to upload a, um, a movie trailer. So we're going to hit this upload button. And that brings us here to this uh, file. We're going to select choose files. It opens up our Explorer for a computer. And we're going to go for desktop. And we are going to go to movie board content. Okay. And here we are going to select movie trailers. Hopefully you will have your content in order as well so that you can quickly uh, choose what content you want to upload. So here we have a movie trailer. Let's select it. And then we're going to, it tells us here which file, and then we're going to upload it. As it's uploading, you'll see that this is telling us that the file is uploading. And here it says Oppenheimer is done uploading. One file was uploaded. So if we go back to the playback settings and select movie trailers to playback and then hit update settings, you'll notice that on the movie board, Oppenheimer trailer will start to playback. Pretty nice. Now we can go back. We're going to go back to movie posters, update, and posters are showing again. All right. Now let's that that's a quick and easy way to demonstrate how you upload content. But let's upload a, a couple more pieces of content. So we're going to go to custom two, and we are going to rename this motion posters because our app can play back motion posters. Motion posters is what we give the name to. You notice it appears. Let's open up that folder. We're going to upload. We're going to choose files. We're going to come back to motion posters where I already have a motion poster. We're going to select it. it. Tells us here which one it is, Terminator, and we're going to upload it. That one uploaded very fast. Done uploading, right? So now let's go back to the home. Back to playback settings, and we're going to choose motion posters and hit update. And you'll notice on the movie board that the motion poster will start to play. They do play with sound, by the way, but I have the sound turned off. So again, super easy and super fast to upload any content that you want. Let's go back to movie posters update and we are back so you see how that was very easy and quick to do rename or you can create a new folder if you've already used all of these you can create a new folder give it a name and you can have as many folders as you want and as long as they're properly organized with the correct content inside of those folders you can play them back immediately from the media folder playback tab here. Super easy. All right, let's go to system settings. System settings is where we make some adjustments to Wi-Fi, power, uh, or rotation. So for instance, the first tab is 
where we could reboot the device, the media player, or shut it down completely. The next one is where we are able to enter our Wi-Fi credentials. So if you wanted to run this on Wi-Fi, which we don't recommend, uh, we do recommend having the media player hardlined to your network. But if you have very strong Wi-Fi signal strength at the location where the media player is, you can certainly try this. You would enter your, the name of your Wi-Fi network here, enter the password, you would hit set. You will have to wait up to 20 seconds to get a confirmation that you are actually connected to Wi-Fi. And if you are, you can reboot the board, unplug your home network from the media player, and you'll now be connected to Wi-Fi. But you do need to have the network connected on boot up for the first time in order to access the app. So keep that in mind. Once you've entered your Wi-Fi credentials, you can disconnect it from your network and then put the media player in the place where it's going to be staying. Now, for those that have multiple movie boards, let's just say they have a movie board on the left and a movie board on the right of the home theater entrance doors. Well, you can give them names. So for instance, you can put DMB left and DMB right, and then access them instead of entering your IP address just by typing in the name into the URL. Now, that doesn't work for all browsers. Keep in mind that some browsers like Safari lock down a lot of settings, and this may not work in your browser. Feel free to try it though. Otherwise, the um, uh, IP address is the way to go. You can also immediately display the IP address just by clicking this button here, and it'll come up on the board. Now, you can also change the orientation of the software. You can flip it 180 degrees. This will come in handy for some custom installations that you might want the thin end of the TV facing you as you're walking down a hall, while the fat end would be on the opposite side. Uh, the fat end being typically the bottom of the TV, which is where the stand connects to, and the top of the TV, which is uh, a very thinner piece. So it uh, gives you some flexibility on installing it. Now, if you buy one of our movie boards complete, not just the DMP kit, but the actual digital movie board, you can sync the lights that are on our movie boards to the primary color of the movie poster that happens to be displayed, right? And so you would first click here to scan for the lights. And once it scans, it's gonna give you the names of the lights that it found. And in this case, I have a few of them. So you would just connect. It says, please click sync. So we're going to sync the LEDs. And now the LEDs have been synced up with our app so that when the movie poster changes, the colors of the backlights will also change. Now it's a subtle effect and uh, it's very computational. Uh, the, the system will look for the primary color before the poster is displayed and then via Bluetooth it would send out that primary color to our Bluetooth lights which will then change over to display that color. The lights are only something about a thousand different colors. So it's not like the Philips Hue where you have a million color combinations. There's only about a thousand color combinations with our particular lights. So it will be more of a best guess uh, as to the color that's going to be displayed. Now you may need to reboot the entire unit for uh, the lights to take effect. And then down here is the updates. If there are any updates available to update your app, this is where you check. You would come down here and you would select check for updates. And after a few seconds, it will tell us if any updates are found or if no updates are found. If updates are found, we would select install and it will automatically install those updates or features via plugins fully automatic. Let's go back to the home tab. Next one is control panel. Control panel is basically a giant remote control that some people find useful uh, running on an iPad. Uh, they will have an iPad on their chair as they're watching the, the movie in their theater room, and they can quickly make quick adjustments to the movie poster board, what to play back, how to play it back, uh, transitions, durations, and controls via their, uh, their iPad without having to take out their phone. Let's go back to the home key. 
and then let's go back to skins. Skins is very cool. So skins is a way to customize the look of your app. So by default, this skin that we are watching on the app is called Cyberpunk, right? And it's a very cool futuristic theme, but we do have a selection of uh, another selection of skin called Classic. And this is more of the classic skin that we had on our other app. And so by selecting it, we can go back to the home key and you'll notice that the look has changed to the classic view. And some of you will recognize this from our previous app. So let's go back to skins. Let's select Cyberpunk. It immediately changes. You come back and you can see immediately changed. Now the cool thing about this is that you'll notice this box here. We will be coming out with more skins sports themed skins, sci-fi themed skins, all kinds of custom skins. You'll be able to download those from our store. And all you would need to do is once they are downloaded, you just drag them into this little box and they automatically install and they will appear here. And you'll be able to select them. Let's go back to the home key. The last tab is the about. This basically is our um, license agreement with uh, quick information as to who we are and the app version number, in this case, 1.0.5. And let's go back to the home key. So that's it. That's a quick tutorial on our Digital Movie Poster Pro Movie Poster app. All right, so thank you for taking the time to watch this video about our Digital Movie Poster Pro Movie Poster app. If you have any questions, or if you want to find out more about our products, please visit our website at digitalmovieboards.com or call us direct or email us at sales at digitalmovieboards.com. Thank you.